name is Harry Neufeld, and I've been asked by the bridge facilitators uh, to provide you with some of my insights uh, from three and a half decades of dealing with election finances. Um, I think the first thing I want to point out is that there's often a lot of concern raised about the independence of an election management body. And my experience is not all election management bodies or EMBs, as we like to call them, are financially independent, even though most that I've worked with have been legally independent. There's two, coin, two sides to the coin um, of independence. Obviously, there's the whole issue of legal independence, the idea that executive government does not control uh, the actions and decisions of the EMB. But the flip side of the coin is accountability. And my experience is that even in jurisdictions that have full legal and financial independence, there is a requirement for a heightened level of accountability. Uh, and most jurisdictions that have the uh, combination of legal and financial independence are required to go through a full financial audit every year. Thank you. Hi, it's Harry Neufeld again. One of the other things that I wanted to chat about was that for an EMB that's working through the process of getting a budget pulled together and approved, accounting practices matter. Accounting is uh, one of those dark sciences that uh, only a few people have the stomach to actually go into, but it's very important that the principles behind the accounting practices be understood by the people who are preparing the budget and who are going to have to account for the monies uh, once the budget is approved. Generally, my experience is that government monies, and uh, it's almost always the case that an EMB is dealing with uh, public funds, uh, have an accounting practice that involves standard objects of expenditure. And these are often referred to as STOBs. And it uh, doesn't really work as an acronym, but my experience as well is that standard objects of expenditure don't have a lot of meaning when it comes to uh, defending your budget or looking in the past to see what things cost last time. So in addition to doing a standard object of expenditure budget, there's a requirement to break it out and present it as a budget for discrete activities that are in support of, of uh, an election or whatever the activities might be in the fiscal year that leads up to an election or follows an election. There's a best practice that's developed with the like election management bodies around the globe uh, that separates out ongoing administrative costs. And these are the things like having a headquarters office and uh, uh, core staff telephones on their desks, desks to sit at, chairs, um, maybe centralized computer systems, janitorial services, that sort of thing that are costs that are going to be incurred year after year, whether there's an election or some other electoral event or not. And to also have a separate uh, category for event funding. And events might be an election or a by-election or a referendum, or a plebiscite, or even something like a redistribution of boundaries uh, for, uh, for the purposes of changing an electoral map. And you want to know what this cost last time, and frequently when you're defending a budget, it's very important to know that the costs for the last event were X, and the, this event is going to cost a bit more because of inflation or a bit less because of our reduced requirements. Uh, but to have a comparison point, it's very important that when budgets are prepared, that it's be very clear what an event cost and what the component costs were within an event. Likewise, ongoing costs are going to be pretty much the same from year to year. Uh, there may be some growth if there's an expansion of the mandate for the EMB, uh, but uh, 
they, they tend to be the same kind of costs year over year with uh, adjustments for inflation and so on. On the topic of accounting matters, there's the whole issue of dealing with stops, which uh, probably government accounting will require uh, there be a classification of all expected expenses into standard categories. There is the whole concept of dealing with ongoing versus event funding. Um, what is going to be the requirement for the ongoing operation that uh, doesn't change very much, whether or not there's an election or any other event? And what is the event cost going to be in the coming fiscal year, even if it's in the preparation for an event? But it gets tricky because you're going to sometimes have projects and it's not going to be clear whether the project is for the ongoing operations of the EMB or for a particular event or for multiple events. Like a new computer system might cost millions of, of dollars. And uh, is it going to be an expense for the election? Is it going to be an expense for multiple elections? And this is where government accounting rules uh, and things like amortization become very important. You need to know these, uh, these rules before you start creating your budget because uh, the effect of how they are dealt with uh, on things like accrual can cause nasty surprises if you don't know about it. I sometimes get asked about what the best budgeting approach is um, for an EMB. And, um, there are people who advocate a top-down approach. That is, you figure out what things cost the last time, be it the election, the enumeration, um, a referendum, and you factor in things like inflation, uh, additional requirements in the legislation, um, an enlarged electorate, and you come up with a figure relatively quickly that uh, is defended on the basis of, well, it cost us this much last time, and these are the additional factors which are, are well justified that are going to increase the costs. That's one way of doing it. Another is to do what's called bottom-up. And this is far more work, and it's very necessary if you haven't got a history of uh, accounting for your electoral events and, and what their costs were. Bottom-up really requires that each section of an EMB sit down and work through what they expect the cost will be for each aspect of what delivering an election or other type of electoral event is going to cost. And having a defensible budget for their responsibilities, and that's all rolled up by generally the accounting folks in the in the organization and so you get a, you get a, a number a bottom line number of, of what the budgetary needs are uh, for an EMB either way which one's better I personally think you need to do both senior management should be doing a top-down budget exercise supporting management middle management and and supervisors should be working from the ground up on figuring out what the real costs are and then there should be a discussion in the middle about who's right and which factors were forgotten and is there are additional things that were in the bottom-up exercise that were not taken uh, into account on the top down or vice versa uh, my experience is doing both ultimately provides the most defensible budget a budget presentation um, to whoever the um, holders of the purse strings are is often a very critical component in success or not success in getting the budget that's required for an EMB. Um, my experience in having led some EMBs is that it's a really good idea to do a dry run of the presentation that you're going to uh, to do and uh, to involve your management staff in that exercise. Typically, um, if it's a legislative committee or a treasury board or some other uh, 
type of, of uh, tribunal or, or other organization, they'll set out a set format as to what can be expected. My experience is that normally you're expected to uh, submit a written budget with uh, details on all your figures and, and um, justification of, of why you require this budget that you've submitted. And uh, that's, uh, that's sent in to whatever the group is that's going to be doing the review. And uh, a few days or a few weeks later, you're asked to come in and do a verbal presentation. This verbal presentation is really, really important. And it can make or break whether or not the EMB gets what it's, it's requesting. And I suggest that uh, this uh, 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 written presentation be distributed to all members of management. And then all members of management are expected to, to meet and go through a dry run where they get to be uh, the people asking the questions. And, uh, and they're the ones who are reacting to comments made in the, uh, the overview. Typically, uh, the leader of the EMB is asked to give a 5, 10, or 15 minute description of the, the budget request. And then it gets opened up for questions, which can often run for 45 minutes, even as long as two hours. And uh, that's where it gets really interesting. And I've had great experience with uh, allowing managers to role play uh, being really, really hard nosed protectors of the public purse and asking the hard questions. I found as well that they're inevitably much harder coming from management in the EMB than they are from whoever makes the decisions ultimately. Many years ago, I was working in the Electoral Commission of Guyana when they were going through a particularly uh, a challenging set of elections. And there was a sign on the wall which I've never forgotten. And it said, failing to plan is planning to fail. And uh, this whole idea of elections being about planning has been something that's been repeated throughout my career. Um, I believe very much that election management bodies are a perfect place uh, to have continuous planning going on and for a real culture of planning to be a feature of, of the organization. A budget, after all, is just another aspect of planning. It's getting to the details of what it's going to take to uh, deliver on, on goals and objectives and strategies that have been chosen by the organization and what resources are going to be required in order to actually deliver uh, the, uh, the things that are desired and needed. Um, there's an old adage that uh, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And that if you're too busy to uh, plan, you're not managing, you're just reacting. Uh, I believe that uh, very much election management bodies uh, are ripe for adopting in a very uh, systematic way project management methodologies. Now there's many ways of, of doing project management, but what I, uh, I think is really important to understand is that something as big as delivering election is not actually a project. It is what's called a portfolio of interlinked projects. Think about that and then think about how every project needs budget.